So, dear brothers, uh, in uh, Christ, uh, last week, few weeks, uh, we studied about, uh, you see, uh, Lord Jesus Christ, uh, at, uh, about the Trinity concept, uh, that the word Trinity never comes in the Bible, you see, and uh, the concept of Trinity also is not there in the Bible. So, who began to preach and how this, uh, this false doctrine come into the church, if you see, this all happened during the Dark Ages. Jesus told that these things will happen in the parable of the wheat and tares. You see, Jesus clearly tells uh, about uh, this one in the parable. When uh, the son of man, he sowed uh, the wheat in the field. And as the, you see, uh, the servants slept uh, in the night, uh, what happened? Uh, the enemy came and sowed the tares among the wheat. So, where was the uh, tares sown? If you see, it was sown among the wheat. It was among the Christians that these false doctrines were sown and because of these false doctrines, the false Christians, you see, arose, you see, and the false Christians today have become the majority in this world. So, Satan, we all know that he doesn't want the truth to come out. So, he began to, you see, cover the real truth by showing the concept of three gods. This is not only in Christianity, but he used this trend all over the world in various, uh, you see, uh, about various religions. Like for example, if you see in Japan, there's a three, uh, three one god called Sanpo Fu and uh, Babylon also. And uh, you see China and various other uh, religions, uh, you see, in this world has got three gods with three faces, uh, you see, and uh, all these uh, things and all. Then, actually, this began initially during the days of Nimrod, about uh, you see, son being the father and the father being the son. How, if you see, Nimrod actually was a great hunter. About him, it is mentioned in Genesis uh, 10 chapter. Actually, during those days, what happened? Uh, Nimrod's father passed away. And uh, uh, Nimrod's mother was in great fear of uh, losing her uh, queenship because the husband has died <clears throat> and probably the people might uh, kill her and uh, somebody might come and, uh, you see, occupy the throne of a queen. Therefore, in that fear, what she did was that she married her own son and began, you see, her own grandson as well as the son. So, here what happened, both the father and the son became the same in the case of Nimrod. Therefore, that was called as confusion. So, since then, you see, the Satan has been deceiving the whole world and especially the Christians uh, using the concept of uh, Trinity, which is the uh, unscriptural day of Budran. So, uh, this uh, uh, in the church, uh, it slowly crept uh, during the you see, uh, 325 AD. That was during the uh, Council of Nicaea. There was a huge uh, debate between uh, Arius and Athanasius. Arius believed uh, that uh, father and the son are the separate uh, identity. But Athanasius claimed that both are one and the same. Because of this uh, debate between these two people, there was a huge, uh, you see, commotion and uh, differences uh, and trouble in the church. That is the time that a Roman emperor, he called for a, you see, a meeting, a council to discuss about these matters. At the time, there were a lot of followers behind Athanasius than Arius because the Bible was not printed. It was in dead language, in Latin language. Nobody read the Bible. Nobody were allowed to touch the Bible. So what happened was that whatever the people said that was believed generally. So hence, a uh, lot of people were supporting Athanasius, only a few people were supporting Arius. So hence, uh, to maintain the kingdom stability, the king, uh, you see, they gave the judgment that what Athanasius believed was correct. And what Athanasius claimed at that time was the father and the son are one and the same. So since dear brethren, uh, what happened was that, uh, you see, uh, the concept of, uh, you see, father and son becoming one and the same crept into the church. There was no treaty, there was a unity. You see, so both are one and the same. And because of his teachings of areas, he was isolated, <clears throat> desolated on the, you see, island where cannibals were there. But by God's grace, areas 
converted everybody on the thailand uh, uh, to be a christian in just a period of one year so king seeing this one was very much impressed and brought back uh, areas to kingdom but that time areas was uh, quite uh, old and he passed away then what happened was that after still many more years during uh, 381 ad in the constant in the council of constantinople you see the trinity concept uh, came into you see the church so there what was believed that as a father and son are the one and the same so even holy spirit is also god so they brought the concept of uh, you see the triune god three are one and the same into the church until then there was no concept of trinity divinity uh, you see in the churches and all now later as the days went on you see the people uh, you see began to claim that uh, as uh, jesus is god as holy spirit is god his father is god surely jesus mother is also god so what happened was dear brethren that uh, you see quadrinity came into the church quadrinity in mass eh? trinity means three isn't it father son and the holy ghost but quadrinity means father son and the holy ghost and uh, you see the mother uh, so quadrinity uh, crept into church in 431 ad itself that uh, period there may be uh, you see worship and all came into the church so then slowly what happened this uh, did not stop here only it went on further as jesus is mother is god so jesus is brother jesus is relative are also to be considered as god so slowly they began to develop that uh, all the relatives of jesus are also god then they decided this is too much extreme they stopped it and they put a full stop for it and uh, you see and uh, stuck uh, and stopped here only to trinity and uh, quadrinity and uh, this was never proved from the bible so into uh, to prove it to show it that uh, you see these three are one and the same they began to do wonderful paintings you see the father son and the holy ghost the father is a very old person uh, the same type this younger person uh, between the age that is jesus and very very still younger that is holy spirit hmm? so or else uh, they used to put three persons next to each other having only how many legs are uh? only four legs why because uh, holy spirit doesn't have legs so, so he keeps on huh? you see huh? holding around uh, flying around so uh, this is how they used to prove uh, a trinity and uh, they used to uh, pictureize the uh, triple acting you see a person so uh, everything is the same only one will be having white beard one will be having a uh, you see huh? Uh, medium uh, uh, you see aged beard then other person will be having a very black uh, beard uh, you see without beard at all that is all is spirit so uh, uh, how they pictureized was that uh, single body with three heads uh, or three heads uh, and uh, three bodies uh, you see so this and all uh, they used to show they used to dramatize you see they used to pictureize and with a lot of paintings uh, even the cathedrals you see on the roof and all they used to do all this magnificent uh, artificial so based on this one they began to prove the concept of trinity not from the scriptures remember not from the scriptures at all dear brethren just imagine our wonderful creator you see our wonderful lord who sacrificed his life for us on the cross is he so awkward with uh, three faces you see or uh, six legs or four legs like a alien no never uh, dear brethren and apart from that one uh, you see to prove their false doctrine they began to use natural uh, things uh, like uh, they began to use the example of uh, you see sun yeah sun sun has got uh, three things uh, power heat uh, and light uh. so similarly uh, the holy spirit one sun with three you see huh? things uh, uh, light uh, power and uh, heat uh. similarly dear brethren uh, you see this was proved this is how god is there one god three forms uh. and uh, they used to prove again with the water water exists in uh, solid state in liquid state in uh, gaseous state uh. so three you see uh, 
three forms. But I, again, it is the same. One water. So similarly, uh, God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit, the three are there, but yet they are one and the same. For the table, how many legs are there? A minimum, how many legs are required? Three legs. So similarly, for God to be there, three legs are minimum. Three are important. For a cycle, how many wheels are important? How many wheels should be there? Three wheels. So similarly, huh? one table with three legs. One table only, but only three legs are there. So similarly, huh? Trinity. One cycle, but uh, three wheels. So similarly, one card, but three, you see, forms. Again, they used to example of a coconut. Coconut, you see, three layers are there, no? outer layer, then inner one, the, you see. One layer is there. And full, if you go deeper, a white layer is there. So three layers, but that one, coconut. This is our trinity. You see, father is there, son is there, Holy Spirit is there. All three in one. And they again used to prove this one with a egg. How huh? egg is there? You see, one egg, three layers. You see, outer lay layer, inner uh, white albumin, and uh, the yellow yolk. Huh? But it is one egg, you know? So similarly, three are there, but it is only one God. You see, even if it was proven from the Bible that this is a false doctrine, the people were never, you see, allowed to believe also. Because, you see, but then, uh, the false doctrine had been so much fixed uh, into their mind, uh, claiming that if you don't believe this one, then you don't have salvation. Then you don't have any, you see, part uh, in the church. Uh, and they were persecuted and they were isolated and treated as heretics. Uh, that is the reason that uh, Bible people began to believe more on the words of the, you see, pastor than what the Bible says. You see, Jesus clearly says, no, I and my father are what? Greater, you see, the father is greater than me. But uh, what did the people believe? That uh, you see, both are huh? one and the same. Jesus said, We are one, but not the same. You see, the, there's a lot of difference between being one and the same, you see, and being uh, one in mind and purpose. You see, the Jews rejected, uh, you see, Christ, only uh, accepting God. Uh, did God leave them? No, God punished them severely in 70 AD. But today, what are the Christians doing? They're doing the same mistake by holding only on to Jesus and rejecting our Almighty God. Now, will God accept them? No, dear brother. See, what does the Bible say? Huh? What do we require for our salvation? Second John, verse 9, brother. Second John, verse 9. Mosam, brother, can you read? Second John, verse 9. Uh, Mosam, are you there? Yes, brother. Uh, brother, Second John, verse nine, brother. Whoever transgresses and avid not in the doctrine of Christ hath not God. He that avid in the doctrine of Christ, he hath both the Father and the Son. Yeah, he hath both the Father. And the son. So father and son, both, you see, are required. Not the father and the son are one and the same. The father and son, both. So two are there, both are required for our salvation. John 17, 3, brother. John 17, 3, brother. Huh? Huh, read, brother. And this is life internal that they might know thee the only true God and Jesus Christ whom thou has sent. See, they may, you see, know thee the only true God and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. You see, dear brethren, so huh, to eternal life, what is required? Three, no, only two. Jesus and God. Now, who is the you see, mediator between God and man. How many people are there, mediator? Huh? Who is the mediator with her? Jesus Christ. Yes, Jesus Christ. First Timothy 2.5, it clearly says now. There is only one God and one mediator. 
between God and man. That is our man Christ Jesus. He is the mediator. You see, dear brethren, huh? therefore, you see, huh? Jesus was created a little lower than the angels, like a human being. He came in the form of a human, you see, in the same as we are. Therefore, Jesus said uh, to Mary, uh, he said, no, uh, don't catch me, don't cling on to me. I have not had ascended to my father and uh, your father, my God and uh, your God. So, both uh, are, uh, you see, brothers, uh, you see, Jesus is our elder brother. You both have one common God, one common father. John chapter 20, verse 17, brother. Hmm. Jesus said unto her, Toss me not, for I am not your ascended to my father. But go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascend unto my father and your father and to my God and your God. Mm. I ascend to my father and to your father. My God and your God. So both is having a God. You see? And uh, Hebrews 2.11, it says now, Jesus is our brother and is not ashamed to call as, as his brother. Hebrews 2.11, brother. Huh? For both he that sanctified and they who are sanctified are all of the one, for which cause he is not ashamed to call them brethren, saying, mm -hmm. I will declare the mm -hmm. name unto my brethren. Mm -hmm. See, he is not ashamed to call us as brethren. So, Bible clearly wants, if anybody, you see, believes uh, eh, other doctrines, which is not as per this true doctrine, uh, that is the spirit of Antichrist. You see, read First John 4, chapter 1, 2, and 3. brother. First John 4, chapter verses 1, 2, and 3. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirit, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out in the world, into mm. the world. Mm. Hereby know you the spirit of God, every spirit that confess that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh of flesh is of God, ah, and every spirit. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is come in flesh, that is of God. What did the Christians claim? That God himself came and died. And does he say? No, he says, Jesus has come in the flesh. That has to be believed. Come in the flesh means what? Come in the flesh as human being. Who has come? The Son of God, not God himself. Then continue, brother. Huh? Uh, and every spirit that confidence, not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist, hmm. whereof you have heard that it should come, and even now already is it in the world. See? This is the spirit of Antichrist. Who doesn't believe this doctrine? Who believes in the doctrine of Trinity? That is the what spirit? Uh? Spirit of Antichrist. Huh? We all know about Antichrist now. Antichrist means what is the number of Antichrist? 666. Six, six. Oh, favorite number. Triple six. <laughs> He'll come and put and seal on the head and on the right hand. Correct, no? See, what does the Apostle John say? This is the spirit of Antichrist. So, Antichrist is already come, it seems. Correct, no? No, we have a God on subject for Antichrist itself. We will study detail. You see? We will study in the future classes about Antichrist. So, this doctrine who doesn't clearly believe you see, the father and the son are separate, but both are one and the same. It's a very dangerous thing. Read verse 14 and 15, brother, of the same chapter, brother. And we have seen and to testify that the father sent the son of to be the savior of the Lord, old, mm. 
Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwelt in him and in God. Ah, whosoever shall confess that Jesus is Son of God, not that Jesus is God, then God will deal with him. Therefore, if he doesn't confess this doctrine properly, means that God is not uh, with him, him at all. So, this all confusion came with that wrong translation of the Bible. You see, in the Bible, various places, what they have done is that, uh, you see, the word God and Lord, are, you see, are interchangeably used. So, whoever reads the Bible, naturally, what happens? Uh, you see, they go into, you see, this uh, mistake of, uh, you see, believing the false doctrine. But actually, if you see, huh, this is not only because of the wrong translation, but also because of the wrong preaching also. Just to put a test, you see, huh? you give one Bible to any neutral person who is not a Christian at all, okay, lock him in a door and tell him to read the Bible completely. After reading the Bible, you see, as soon as he comes from the room, just ask him one simple question. See, what does the Bible say about God? Ask him the question, who is Jesus? He will clearly tell that Jesus is the Son of God and God is the Almighty God. He will clearly say, all this confusion is because of these false preachers only who stress and you see, who put a lot of you see, uh, pressure on this uh, false doctrine. They were then, you see, Christ actually did not have any authority until he came and proved his faithfulness to the Lord on the death of the cross. After proving his faithfulness only, God gave him the entire authority, you see, of uh, both heaven and earth. In Revelation 5th chapter, you see, 1 to 4, it is clearly given. Let us read that one, brother. Revelation 5th chapter, verses 1 to 4, brother. Ashish, brother, can you read? Are, they, are you there? Okay. Okay, thank you. And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the backside, sealed with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the book and to lose the seals thereof? And no man in heaven, nor in earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. And I wept much, because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look thereon. Mm, you see, no one was worthy to open the scroll. And uh, you see, open the seal and read the scroll with him, sir. Then as John was crying, immediately, what happened? A uh, uh, sound came from, uh, uh, you see, he did, uh, don't worry, behold, uh, Lamb of God, Lion of the tribe of Judah has overcome, you see, to see, to break the seals and see and read the scroll. So, this clearly proves that the Heavenly Father solely had all the authority until Jesus proved his faithfulness on the cross. After Jesus proved his faithfulness on the cross, then only a complete authority was given by God, you see, to Jesus. You see, the word actually uh, in uh, the Hebrew, it's actually in the Bible, you can see the word is actually from, uh, comes uh, as Jehovah. You see, uh, it uh, actually comes from the original word called as YHWH. So what is that YHWH? We all know very well. Without vowels, we can't, you see, spell out a word. Vowels means A-E-I-O-U. At least any of these words are there. Then only we can spell out a word or else we can't spell out a word. You see, but you see YHWH, there's no vowels at all. So how do you spell it out? Therefore, what did the translators do to bring out a proper spelling, to spell it out properly, they added the vowels A and E in between Y-H-W-H. Then what happened? It became Yahweh. Yahweh becomes slowly as Yehovah or Jehovah. Actually, even, you see, dear brethren, the word Jehovah actually comes, uh, you see, not many times in the Bible, but comes for the first time in Exodus 6th chapter, 3rd verse. Actually, until then, 
God's name was called as I am that I am. That is his title. I am that I am means I am there. There's no beginning. There's no end. I am that I am. I am living, living, living. That's all. There is no end and no beginning. Read Exodus 3.14, brother. And Exodus 6.3, brother. Mosa, brother, can you read? Okay, brother. And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said those... Shall those say unto the children of Israel, I am that sent me unto you? Mm. 6 3. And I appear unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob by the name of God Almighty, but my name, Jehovah, was I not known to them? Ah, see, I am that I am means the one who is. Living everlastingly. One who is immortal. There is no beginning and no end. But by word Jehovah, I was not known. So here, yeah, that word actually comes from the root meaning of Elohim. See, Elohim in the Bible, it is used in a plural way. You see, like uh, plural means what? It is not in a, used in a singular way. Like uh, in English, we say, you know, he, he came. You see? That's a that's common use for uh, you see uh, singular as well as uh, you see other uh, things at all. But if multiple people are coming, uh, we say as they are coming. You see that doesn't give respect. You see uh, we can say that uh, uh, his father he is coming. We don't say uh, his father they are coming. You see it doesn't give proper sentence formation in English. But in other language, uh, you see it gives lot of uh, you see meaning. You see, lot of respect. You see, like for example, uh, if we address God uh, in uh, Hindi, uh, uh, how do we speak it? Uh, Bhagwan ko, uh, unko, Bhagwan ko, unko, uh, sabi pata hai, vese bolenge. Correct now? Bhagwan ko, yani unko, Bhagwan ko sabi pata hai, vese bolenge. We don't uh, say uh, Bhagwan ko. Uh, usko, yaar, uh, or uh, we don't uh, use it in a singular way like uh, uh, tumko pata hai, uh, tujko pata hai. You see, we don't use such terms. That is all uh, singular and uh, uh, very uh, low quality language. But uh, how do we use it? Aapko, you see, unko. Uh, so that is a respectable way. So that is the word actually Yelohim in the uh, Bible, you see, in the Old Testament. Uh, and uh, in the Old Testament, uh, you see, whenever it is speaking about our Lord, our God Almighty, the word Lord is used in full capital letters. Or the word God is used in full capital letters. You see? But when it comes to the New Testament, that problem is solved. You see? When it comes to the New Testament, what is happened? You see? That the problem is uh, in the Old Testament, for our Lord Jesus, it is uh, uh, used as small l o r d. You see, capital L, small o, small r, small d. So this difference we can note it in the Old Testament when it is speaking about Almighty God, it's speaking about our Lord Jesus. That difference, you see, that is can be read in Psalm 110, one brother. Can you read, it, brother? Psalm 110, one Muslim brother. Can you read from the Bible? Okay, brother. Hmm. One, ten, one. The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy food full the stall. Ah now there are two lords mentioned there. Correct now, brother? Yeah. Have you noticed the difference between the first lord and second lord? Mm. Mm. Second lord. Mm. How is the second lord? Small letter. Correct now? Second lord, I think uh 
small letter or capital letter? Yes, this second, second lot uh, is for David. No, no, no. How is it the the text? Is it capital or small? Oh, it's uh, second letter is uh, small. Ah, how is the first lord? First lord is capital. Ah, this is speaking about the Lord God Almighty telling to Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. You see? What did Je yeah. God tell to Jesus? And the Lord said unto my Lord. You see? G David is saying, Almighty God said unto Jesus. You see? You got it, brother? So, Jesus, so yeah. there are three persons here. One is the Almighty God. One is Jesus, one is David. So David is saying what actually God said unto Jesus. Therefore he says, the Lord said unto my Lord, sit though at my right hand until I make my enemies the footstool. Got it, brother? Difference? Huh? Mm -hmm. ah, this is there in the entire Old Testament. And uh, mm -hmm. in the New Testament, uh, this problem is solved. How? Because for God, Wherever you read in the New Testament, it is mentioned as God or Father. But for Lord Jesus Christ, it is mentioned as Lord or Son. So in the New Testament, we can clearly identify it. But in the Old Testament, how do you identify? It is the capital letters and small letters. You see, Satan is very clever. Yeah? See, he, he made all the Christians to believe in Trinity. But does he believe in Trinity? Does he believe that God is uh, three in one? Let us read James 2.19, brother. James 2.19, brother. Huh? Though believest that there is one God, hmm. do does well, the hmm. devil also believe and tremble. What does the devil believe? Does he believe three in one God? Does he believe in three in one God? There is one God. One God. He believes the one God. Doctrine. But he has deceived the whole world to believe. Three in one God. You see? How oh, Satan is God of this world. Therefore, he is very, you see, intelligent and very sharp. Therefore, we should be very obedient to the word of God. Therefore, you see, huh? now, what did Jesus taught us to pray? Huh? Our Father, which art in heaven. He said, no, ask to the Father in my name. You see, and whatever you ask in my name, my Father will grant unto you. So, our prayers, how should we be? It be? We should be to God in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. But today, how do the Christians pray? No? They pray huh? to Lord Jesus Christ. And in the end, say, oh Lord, I am asking all these things in your Wonderful name, Jesus. How can we ask Jesus in Jesus' name? How awkward it is. You see, if you are writing a letter to a particular person, it has to be addressed to a particular person. Then only the person will read. You see, if you are posting a letter, but addressing it to somebody else, will that person read? Like for example, if I am sending a letter to Brother Mausam, I should address as a brother, dear brother Mosam, how are you? Instead of addressing as dear brother Mosam, if I address as a dear brother Ashish, how are you? Will brother Mosam read the letter? You won't read. You will say, oh, this is for brother Ashish. Let me give it to Ashish brother. So similarly, we need to ask God in whose name? In the name of our Lord, Jesus Christ. He said, ask in my name. To God. So our prayer should be to God in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. You see, this, uh, you see, the difference between uh, the God and Jesus uh, and how, you see, God gave the authority to Jesus is clearly mentioned in a, in a lesson in the Old Testament, in the life of J Joseph. Joseph, when he interpreted the dream of Pharaoh, he was promoted to a very excellent uh, order. You see, a very excellent order, you see, to be next to Pharaoh. He said, Pharaoh said, huh, without your permission, nobody shall lift their hand or leg in my kingdom. And he gave his signing authority, the signet to him. He put a gold chain, he put a cross, and gave huh, 
chariot to ride upon, but that was the second chariot, not the first chariot. And he said, everybody shall bow down to you, except in the throne. I will be greater than you. But all the people shall obey you, except me, he said. Let us read that verse, brother. It's very beautiful. Genesis 41, verses 40 to 44, brother. Genesis 41st chapter, verses 40 to 41, brother. Can you read, brother? Was brother, is it possible? Uh, 40, 41, 40 to 44, brother. Correct. Uh, okay, brother. Do shall be over my house, and according unto the word shall all my people be ruled. Only in the throne will I be greater than though, and Pharaoh said, Underline, brother. Joseph, uh, wait, wait, brother. Read it very cautiously. According to thy word, all the people will be ruled. So you will rule the people, but only on the throne, I will be greater than you. Underline the difference. You see? Huh? So, Pharaoh was promoted, but yet he was not greater than Pharaoh. Huh? Correct, no? Pharaoh promoted Joseph. But doesn't mean that Joseph is on the top of Pharaoh. Hmm? Correct, no? Next, brother. Huh? And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, See, I have said the over all the land of Egypt, and Pharaoh took off his ring from his hand and put it off Joseph's hands and arrayed him in bustures of line, fine linen and put a gold chain about his neck. And he made him to ride in the second chariot which he had. See, and which they... chariot? Second chariot, not second the first chariot. chariot. So first chariot was reserved for Pharaoh himself. So Joseph rode on the second chariot. You see? Then, though he ruled the Egypt, though everybody had to obey Joseph, he rode on the second chariot. Then, and they cried before him, bowed the knee, and he made him ruler over all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh said unto him, uh, Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I am Pharaoh, with, and without the shall no man lift up his hand of feet in all the land of Egypt. See? Huh? What did uh, Pharaoh say? Without your permission, nobody should do anything in Egypt. But in the throne, I will be higher than you. Same way, you see, God promoted Jesus to such a position. He gave all authority to be under Jesus. But what did the Bible say? He says, uh, yet on the throne, God will be higher than Jesus. Read with her. 1 Corinthians 15 chapter with her. 27 28 with her. 1 Corinthians 15 chapter 27 and 28 with her. Huh? For he had put all things under his feet, but when he said, All things are put under him, it is manifest that he is accepted. See? Wait, 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 wait. What does he say? For he had put all things, God had put all things under Jesus' feet. But when God says that all things are put under Jesus' feet, it is clearly manifest that he is uh, accepted. That means he is not there in that uh, list. When God put everything under Jesus, it doesn't mean that even God also came under Jesus. Correct? No? It means that he is exception. He is uh, accepted. Continue with the next. Uh, huh? Which did put all things under him, and when all things shall be subdued unto him, then shall the Son also himself be subject unto him that put all things under him, that God may be all in all. See? When all things shall be made subject by Jesus, Jesus also shall come under the Father, it seems, brother. See, very beautiful, no? Same way as Joseph. You see, Jesus also will be subject to God. Understood huh? clearly? Huh? Huh, brother, you have Nepali Bible, brother? Ashish, brother, can you read Nepali? You have it? Yeah. yeah. I read, brother. First Corinthians 15, 27, 28. Read slowly. Muslim, brother, listen carefully. Kinaki, while a sobe kuraru, Mahaka Pamuni Paridino Waikut. तर सबै कुराहरु उहाँको अधीनमा पारिएका छन् 
अनि जब वहाँ भन्नु तब सबै कुरा वहाँको अधीनमा पार्नु हुने आफै चाहिँ अलग हुनुहुन्छ भन्ने स्पष्ट हुन्छ तर जब सबै कुराहरू वहाँको अधीनमा पारिन्छ तब परमेश्वरले सबै कुराहरूमा सबै थोक हुन् भनेर पुत्र आफै पनि सबै कुराहरू वहाँको अधीनमा पार्नु भनेको अधीनमा रहनु ओके गट इट ब्रदर क्लियरली मौसम बजार या या ब्रदर आई गट इट सी दिस इज द डिफरेंस बिटवीन गॉड एंड जीसस सो वी नीड टू अंडरस्टैंड दिस वन क्लियरली सो दिस फर्स्ट डॉक्ट्रिन ऑफ ट्रिनिटी द वेरी पेगन रॉन्ग डॉक्ट्रिन केम इनटू द चर्च यू सी बिकॉज ऑफ दिस ग्रेट करप्ट सिस्टम सेटम ब्रॉट इट इनसाइड now what should we do huh? should we believe this false doctrine how should we behave with those people who believe in the trinity what does the bible say second john verses 9 to 11 brother mausa madara yeah brother whoever transgresses and abide not in the doctrine of christ has not god he that abide in the doctrine of christ he that he had both the father and the son see if he has come... both the father and the son so we need to have both both are not on the same continue next yeah if there come any unto you and bring not this doctrine receive him not into your ah, house if uh, somebody comes with a doctrine of trinity don't allow him inside your house this is not what uh, i am telling this is what the bible says don't allow him inside the house don't receive him into into your house continue next ha huh? neither bite neither bite him god speed see neither or... tell him farewell god will keep you god will bless you no don't bless him also ha huh? for he that beated him god speed is particular of his evil deeds see if you tell goodbye god bless you may god protect you praise the lord what does it mean it means that you are partaking in his evil deeds dear brethren so why does it say like this one we're going to see all these things na anti christ class okay now let me ask one final question now let me see how brother mosam will answer mosam brother Now you answer the two questions that are mentioned in the Proverbs chapter thirty verse four. Ah, huh? read it carefully and answer the two questions. Okay, read with us. Proverbs chapter thirty verse four. Hmm. Hmm. So, my brother, should I read for everyone? Yeah, yeah, you read for everyone loudly. Oh, okay. Who that ascended up into heaven or descended? Who had gathered the wine in his feast? Who had bound the water in garment? Who had established all the end of the earth? What is his name? Ah, and what, what is his name? That is the first question. Second question, continue. Ah. and what is his son's name ah. if do can tell yes this is the second question what is his son's name now you tell me the answer for both the questions what is his name and what is his son's name his name is almighty god and son is jesus christ very good brother. simple see this only verse answers the question for all the doctrines of trinity if we can answer it correctly that shows that we are reading the bible properly okay so we will end the class here okay so next class we will see about our almighty god okay brother so any questions any doubts you have you can ask